So we're going to look at some group theory today and in particular we're going to use this pentagon and this is a regular pentagon with all equal sides. So what we're looking for is preserving symmetries by rotating or reflecting and then what we're going to do is going to produce some two line permutations for where each one of these corners ends up. So first of all let's look at the rotations. So for the rotations they will all rotate around these kind of axis. So the shortest rotation, which will be this one, which will keep all the symmetries preserved, we'll call A, and that's the first one. So A is going to be rotated through, well, if it's 2 pi for the whole circle and there's 5, so A will be 2 pi over 5. So that's the number of radians that A will rotate. So that's A. Now let's get ready for B. So B will go round to this point. So that's our B rotation. And working in anti-clockwise direction is standard for rotations. So B is going to be twice as far as A. So that's going to be then 4 pi over 5. So that's our B. Next one will be C. So let's work out what C will be. So C will go from here round to here. So the C rotation will be 6 pi over 5 in radians. And then the next one here will go round to this point, And that will be rotation D. So D will be through 8 pi over 5 radians. And then the final one is where everything uh, returns back to where it was is the identity um, symmetry or the identity element is just uh, we're going to call it as E. So E means it's not going to move at all so that's our E. So two line permutations for each of these. If we go down the list I'll look at some like shortcuts to do it and then I'm going to find a shortcut to find the reflections by using the rotations. So E in two line permutations write the starting point on the top line and then on the second line we'll write down where every of these points ends up so as nothing changes we just continue and write the top line okay now let's have a look at a so starting point one if we rotate through A, which is 2 pi over 5, everything will just turn around by one um, side. So then this point will end up to this point. This point will end up to this point. So basically finding the second line is just like adding 1 modulus 5. So that will end up with 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 5 plus 1 is 6, mod 5 is 1. Okay, now for B... It's going to move around the equivalent of two sides. So point one will end up at three, two will end up at four, three will end up at five. So now it's just like adding two modulus five. So quickly writing down the permutations for this one. So adding two, three, four, five, and then one, and then two. And if you've got any repeated or any numbers missing from this bottom line, you'll know you've made a mistake somewhere. You should have the full complement of all five of the numbers. Okay, C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So rotation C brings this point down to here. So that's our C rotation through 6 pi over 5. So 1 will go to 4, 2 will go to 5. So it's like adding 3 modulus 5. So that's 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. And then finally D, which brings 1 all the way around to here following the rotation, 1 goes to 5, 2 goes to 1, so it's like adding 4 modulus 5. So it's 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that's all our rotations. Now we know we're correct because the symmetries of any regular polygon is 2n. So the symmetries total 2n, where n is the number of sides. Now that n is split up into two parts. 
So it's rotations plus the reflections. That's on a regular polygon of two dimensions. So they are equal amounts as well. So the rotations and the reflections are both going to be equivalent to the number of sides. Okay, so now reflections, what I don't want to do this time is go through the process of finding all the rotations by flipping it through all the different axes. So for example, we've got this axis here, which we could call uh, V, that's our V reflection. Then we could have this one here, which will go through this point, and then we could call that our W reflection. Next one we could do is this one. That could be our X rotation. Next one could go through here, and that would be our Y rotation. And then finally, through here, that could be our Z reflection. So you could see, for example, with this one, you just basically reflect it over. So if you work out the first one, and then what we can do is we can use that with the direct symmetry and compose the two together to find all of our reflections. So for V, let's write down V uh, here. So V, just go through the motion of, of calculating V and then we use a nice little trick to find the rest. So for V, rotating through, sorry, reflecting through here, one would remain unchanged, two and five would change over, and three and four would change over. So now we're going to use this V as our base. Okay, so now with this V now, what we can do is we can multiply with each one of these, and then that will give us then our different symmetries. So if we did now V composed with A, so we have our start point as always. So what we do is we take the V, so what happens at V, and then uh, apply that to our um, permutation A and see what happens. So starting point one. So for V, one goes to one. And then if we see what happens when we're at one, when we're at A, one goes to two. So that's how we compose the two. So starting again with the point two. So V first, two goes to five. And then at A, five goes to one. So one and two, these ones are flipped over. So that's these ones here. So this is looking like it's gonna be our Y. So let's just check what happens now. So if it is our Y, what should happen is that four should remain with four. So let's see what happens. So three, so V uh, composed with A, so V three goes to four and then four goes to five. So it's looking good so far, three and five look like they're gonna flip. Four, so four goes to three, and three goes to four. So yeah, this is gonna be our reflection Y. So this equals our Y, we can put that in straight away because this has to be three, because it's the only one missing. So five goes to two, two goes to three. So there we go, so that's good. Okay, so V's composed with A. So now do V composed with B. So starting points as always. So V, one goes to one, and now with B, one goes to three. Two goes to five, five goes to two. So two doesn't move at all. So this is looking like our W reflection. So we can put that in there straight away because all the others will have to change. Okay, three to four, four goes to one. Four goes to three, and three goes to five. And, and then for five on the V, five goes to two, two goes to four. So that would be our W reflection because the two remains unchanged and the others all flip. So that would take care of that one. Okay, now let's look at V composed with C. So 
starting the one, two, three, four, five. So by now you're probably getting the pattern now. So one, starting at V, goes to one, and then one goes to four. So now one and four change places. So that's these ones. So this is now looking like it's our reflection Z. So if that's the case, then five will remain unchanged. Let's see what happens. So now for two, two goes to five, five goes to three. Three goes to four, four goes to two. Four goes to three, three goes to one. And then five goes to two, two goes to five. So with five remaining unchanged, that must be reflection Z. Okay, then let's try another one. B composed with D. So let's see what happens there. Starting with one, I'm using this D. One goes to one, one goes to five. Two goes to, sorry, two goes to five. Five goes to four. Three, so now we've got three. Three goes to four. Four goes to three. So three remains unchanged on this one. So if three remains unchanged, then we must be here using rotation X. Sorry, reflection X, not rotation X. Careful not to get mixed up. Four goes to three. And then three goes to two. And then all being well, this should be number one. Five goes to two, two goes to one. Okay, so it looks like two and four exchange places and one and five exchange places. So that would be perfect for our X symmetry. And then for the last one, V composed with E. So let's see what happens here. So one goes to one, one goes to one. Two goes to five, five goes to five. Three goes to four, four goes to four. And then four goes to three, three goes to three. And for this one, five remains. So let's see what happens here. Well, five, five goes to two, two goes to two. So there we go. So now we're left here with one staying as it is. So that will be rotation, sorry, reflection uh, V. So V composed with V, as we know, is the identity. So V will remain unchanged. So that's how we get all of our rotations and reflections. So let's just write them up on here, A, B, C, D, and E. And we've got V, Y, W, Z, and X. And that's our five reflections. So that's how we can get our reflections by using one of the rotations. Now, for example, you could have started off with the reflection W, which is this one. Compose that first here, as we did with the B, and then compose that with all of the other rotations, you would still get the same output. Okay.